everybody. So welcome to our Friday Nutrition Talks. My name is Sam McCarthy. I'm a registered dietitian with Cedardale. And I am here this Friday to talk a little bit about healthy snacks because I know that's an area that many people have been struggling with since the whole pandemic started and we've been stuck at home because it's very easy to just sit on the couch and snack on junk food. So we're going to talk about um, what makes a healthy snack and how we can start to bring uh, more of those healthier habits into our lives. So I'm going to start sharing my screen so you guys can see my slides. Uh, just give me a second here. All right. There we go. Okay. So you should be able to see my slides now. Uh, are they loading? You should be able to see them in a second. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about healthy snacking. So I think why we're all here today is we're trying to avoid this. Um, and trying to avoid uh, just being a couch potato and grabbing that bag of potato chips or cookies or sweets or whatever is around um, and gaining that quarantine 15, as they're calling it, as it's been termed on social media. Uh, so how can we prevent this? Some things that I talk about when I work with clients is your healthy snacks should be planned ahead of time. This is extremely important um, and they should be part of your routine. So this is something that I've implemented myself um, to make sure that I'm eating snacks at, at set times instead of ending up grazing all day long because that can be pretty, uh, pretty risky if you're grazing and just kind of picking every time you're going by the kitchen because now that we're home we have access to food 24-7. So planning your snacks ahead of time, just like you plan your meals or should be planning your meals, um, you want to do the same with your snacks. Uh, make sure that when you're eating a snack that you are actually hungry, okay, and not just eating out of boredom, okay? So if your stomach is growling and you're feeling a little bit of that stomach pain, um, you know, that's that hunger cue, then that's great. It's time to have a snack. But if you're just, you know, passing through the kitchen or you're watching TV and you want something to do along with that, you're not truly hungry, that's the kind of behavior that you want to change and try and get away from just grabbing that bag of whatever it is that you want. Now, when you're planning snacks, one thing that you really want to think about is in your mind telling yourself that the snack is more of a mini meal, okay? Because sometimes when we think just snack, some words that are things that come to our mind right away are going to be, you know, a granola bar, a piece of fruit, um, those snack foods, you know, bags of processed foods that are available out there. Um, and that typically leads to a very low balance, low nutritious type of food, um, which is why we can eat so much of it. So you want to think of snacks as mini meals, because if you're truly hungry and you really need that food, those calories, those nutrients, you want to make sure that you're feeding something um, to your body that's going to be worth your while, not something that's high calorie with very low nutrients. So think of them as mini meals. We're gonna talk about uh, how to build that mini meal in just a moment, but it should include some type of lean protein source, a healthy fat or fiber, um, and some type of good carbohydrate in there as well, not just carbohydrates, which is what many of our snacks are. And if it's a problem with portion control, even if it's something healthy like nuts, which I know is a problem for many of my clients, Put your snacks into single serving containers. So grab a little bowl, grab a little baggie, you know, put them into containers, either buy them pre-portioned or put them into those pre-portioned uh, bags or containers when you get home. So that way you're not bringing the whole container with you to the couch because we know that can lead to uh, unhealthy behaviors for sure. Before you know it, the whole bag of chips is gonna be gone. So those are some basic guidelines for healthy snacks. What you wanna think about when you're building a healthy snack, okay, is that you want to make sure it has that protein, that lean protein source and, and or a good healthy fat. Okay, I say and or because it could be something like nuts. Nuts have both healthy fats and they're also a good protein source. Avocados, those would be just fats. Eggs would be mostly protein from that, okay? And what that does is that protein or that healthy fat is what's gonna satisfy you and keep you full longer. So you're not reaching for another snack 20 minutes from the point that you end the last snack, okay? The point of our snack should be that we are 
giving our body nutrients and that we're fulfilling our hunger. Um, so you want to make sure that it is something that's going to last you to the next meal, not something where you're going to be hungry pretty soon after that. And then you want to pair that healthy protein or healthy fat with some type of healthy carbohydrate. Most of us just have the carbohydrates for snacks, and that's a problem because those carbohydrates, many of them are higher on the glycemic index. What does that mean? That means it spikes your blood sugar more. Okay, so you get that energy, you know, sugar high where you're feeling good, but it's going to be followed by a crash not long after that, maybe 20, 30 minutes, depending on what you ate. And at that point, you're going to feel hungry again. You're going to be craving carbohydrates. So you're going to be reaching for more of those unhealthy carbs. And it just becomes this vicious cycle up and down, up and down, which is why we tend to overeat. So if you pair that healthy carbohydrate with that protein or fat source, then it's not going to cause that super high spike in blood sugar. It's going to be more level. It's going to keep you fuller longer. So you're less likely to grab another snack later and begin grazing for the rest of the day. So what are some sources of these uh, lean proteins or healthy fats? If you look on the left-hand side of the page, you'll see some sources could be hummus, avocado, um, guacamole, nuts and nut butters like peanut butter or almond butter, uh, eggs, beans, chicken, yogurt, cheese. These are all great protein and lean fat, or sorry, lean protein, healthy fat sources. And then what you'll see on the right side are some really good, well-balanced carbohydrate sources. We tend to fear carbohydrates. We're kind of in that diet craze of low carb or no carb whatsoever. But there's a lot of good carbohydrates out there. We just need to make sure that we're eating the right types of carbohydrates. We tend to eat a lot of the very low nutrient, uh, highly processed carbohydrates, not a lot of these good um, whole grain or high nutrient type of carbohydrate sources. So this could be fruits, fresh or frozen, something like a whole grain cracker. I often recommend Triscuits as one of my favorite crackers, um, a good whole grain bread that's truly whole grain. Popcorn is actually a good uh, whole grain as long as it's not smothered in butter like uh, movie theater popcorn is. Uh, rice cakes, again, they're kind of like a whole grain. You can find whole grain rice cakes. Vegetables, um, whether they're starchy or non-starchy. Um, and also salsa is another good one. So what you want to try and do is build a snack where you get one food from each of these columns. Okay, And that's how you can get a nice balanced snack that's going to fill you up. What do you want to avoid? You want to avoid um, those, those, oh, it should say high, that's a little typo, high glycemic snacks, okay, where it's mostly carbohydrates with little to no protein, fat, or fiber, which unfortunately is a lot of the snack foods or what we think of as snack foods out there. Um, these would be like your candies, your sweets, um, sugar sweetened beverages, whether it's soda or juice or um, like some of your coffee drinks, like think of the very sweet like lattes or frappuccinos, things that we tend to look for um, mid-afternoon when we're in that slump, but just provide us that sugar high and that crash later on. White flour products, whether it's a cracker that's made with white flour, like a Ritz cracker, um, a white bread, white pasta, and all of the other like snack foods out there, like pretzels and even rice cakes that are highly processed. So you saw them on both lists, depending on the source of the, the rice cakes. A lot of your diet or low calorie, um, you know, special K, fiber one, you know, those, those types of, uh, diet type products tend to be higher on the glycemic index. When it's higher on the glycemic index, it's going to cause that quick spike in blood sugar. So you want to be careful about those. Most of our cereals, um, even some of the better cereals out there, uh, because they're just so highly processed, they don't have a lot of protein, they don't have a lot of fiber, but they have a lot of sugar. Um, they're going to be high glycemic, so not the best to have. Um, dried fruits are often sweetened, so they have a lot of added sugars in them. Not all of them, but many of them are, I'd say most uh, dried fruits are, so they're gonna cause that big spike. Um, many of your fruits can be high on the glycemic too, not to say that they're bad, but just eating them by themselves is not really gonna do a lot to satisfy you and keep you to the next meal. What you really wanna do to figure out if a food is high glycemic or low glycemic is to read the label. I know that sounds intuitive, right? We've been taught to read the label for years, 
but what are you looking at on the label? Many of us just go straight to calories, okay? And it's not just about the calories. They matter to a degree, but that's not the only thing you want to look at. You want to look at the nutrients in there. So looking at a label, you'll see this is the new label um, that's now on all, their, all of our foods. So calories is, of course, right at the top. What you want to look for to figure out if a food is low or high glycemic is really look at the content of fat, fiber, and protein. Okay, fat, fiber, and protein. So let's look at this label that we have here, the one that's on the left. Okay, so it's a total of 230 calories, which some of you will be like, oh, maybe that's really high. Well, it depends. I don't think that's high. Um, looking at the fat, okay, we've got eight grams of fat in this food. Okay, looking at the fiber, there's four grams of fiber, and look at the protein, there's three grams of protein. Okay, so what I do, what I tell my clients to do is to add those three things up, add up the fat, the protein, and the fiber. So if you add all those up together, that's going to be 15 grams total with those three things. Now compare that to the total carbohydrates, which is 37 grams. 37 grams to 15. Okay, that's a big difference, okay? That means that there's a lot more carbohydrates in this food and not as much fat, protein, um, and fiber. So it's gonna be probably a little bit, I'd say medium to high on the glycemic index, okay? Which means it's gonna spike your blood sugar more. So it's a snack that's probably not gonna fill you very long, okay? So you wanna be careful of, of a snack like that or pair it with something that has a little bit more fat and protein in it, okay? So that's just a quick little trick when you're looking at your label. We don't just wanna look at calories, we wanna look at all of those nutrients, the fat, the protein, the fiber, in relation to the carbs and the sugar. So some healthy snack ideas. Over the next uh, several slides, I have a bunch of snack ideas listed here. Um, so I'm not going to read through every little bullet point. I'll let you kind of just graze through and take a look at some of these. And then if you'd like me to send you um, these slides with all of these snack ideas, just go ahead and put your email into the chat box and I will, I'll send it to you right after this. So you have a copy of all of these different types of snack ideas. One thing I really recommend for many of my clients is think outside the box with your snacks. Um, you know, we tend to just think of fruit, granola bars, um, nuts, and that can get very boring very fast. Those, those can all be very healthy things, but we get bored. And when we get bored with our foods, what do we do? We look for other things. And that's when we bring in all the junk foods and the processed foods and the things like that. So really get creative. Think of it more as that mini meal. Some of the things on this page are, are snacks that you've heard of, but some of the ones on the next several pages might be a little bit more out of the box for you. Um, so you'll see on this page some basic stuff, you know, nuts and fruit, not just fruit, but having the nuts to balance it or a nut butter, um, you know, yogurt and berries, uh, tzatziki sauce, it's a favorite of mine with veggies or whole grain crackers, hummus and veggies. So the list goes on on this page. It's pairing those things together, okay, so that you get both the healthy fat or protein and the good car carbohydrate source. Some more snack ideas on this page. You'll see these are a little bit more uh, out of the box, you know, like a uh, veggie pizza made on a whole wheat English muffin with, you know, some low fat cream cheese, some veggies on top, um, maybe a little tomato sauce or a little extra uh, sprinkle of shredded cheese, uh, oatmeal with some fruit and nuts or something in it. Uh, that can be a snack. It can also be breakfast. Depends on the portion size, right? Um, a whole grain waffle with some peanut butter or almond butter on top of it. Um, a banana split, that could be like a dessert or a snack uh, after your dinner. Um, so a lot of different things that you can, you can do to get creative with your snacks. And I know many of us have more time right now to build some healthy snacks, which is a good thing. So one more slide with some uh, other snack ideas here. Um, you know, a can of low sodium tomato soup with some whole grain crackers, you know, popcorn with a little sprinkle of cheese, um, veggies and some ranch. So lots of different snack ideas for you guys um, to get you out of just grabbing that easy processed snack food. So when it comes to healthy snacks, just to review, you want to make sure that it is a low glycemic snack, meaning it has a protein 
or a fat and some fiber maybe, and a good carbohydrate source, not those high glycemic mm -hmm. snack items that are going to spike your blood sugar and just have a lot of calories with very little nutrients. We want to try to avoid that because that's what leads to overeating and wanting to have more and more and more because it's never really filling you. Okay. It's a lot harder to overeat on carrots and celery than it is to overeat on a package of Girl Scout cookies. Right. Um, so those are some of my, my snack ideas. Uh, I said earlier, if you want to get all of those snack ideas, just put your email in the chat box and I can send it over to you, or you can send me an email personally. You can see my email listed there, smccarthy at cedardale-health.net. And then I will also mention to you guys, if you didn't see the email, that um, we're very excited. Cedardale is very excited to offer some more virtual options for you guys. I'm going to be continuing these nutrition talks for a couple more weeks, um, but I'll also um, be doing some virtual nutrition counseling. Uh, Kelly, our fitness director, is doing some virtual training and uh, small group training. So if you want to stay focused and motivated during this difficult time, um, we can help you out all virtually, just like we're doing now through Zoom. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing. And you guys can come on to the video now if you wanna say hi. Um, and if you have any other questions, you can put them into the chat box, say hello, any issues, concerns, anything you wanna say, feel free now.